then what you should be seeing right now is a screen called IBM InfoSphere Guardian for Applications. This is the login screen for the administration UI. I'm going to just log in. And in the welcome page, we have that same picture where you have the user, the browser, and the application server, which sometimes uh, has one or more databases attached to it. And you can see that one, and each one has a description of exactly what happens in the request and then the response where we intercept and change the messages. On the other tab, I have uh, already prepared, uh, downloaded a Sugar CRM, which is a free CRM application that I could download for the web, and it comes pre-populated with data, so it's convenient for demos. I can show data, and I can show masking on data. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to start with a simple rule. Let's say that we want to mask all the phone numbers that appear in the application. Let's say that those are sensitive data and see how we do that. So I will go to the policy builder, and I will create a new policy. I will call it demo policy. Now I will add a screen mask rule. We call it, we call it screen mask rule because it looks as if it's happening on the user's screen. Okay, I'm going to give it a name. It's called screen rule 1. First off, you can see that we have several filters uh, that we can use for uh, applying or not applying the different rules. We can use server IP, client IP, application users, and URL prefixes. And th this means that and we can use either a whitelist or a blacklist. For example, a whitelist would say, for this group of users, only they can see the data. A blacklist for the same user group would mean that only they, are, they cannot see the data, okay? And both have applications, and we can also uh, take it from the system itself, from the LDAP directory, etc. cetera. For, this, uh, the, for the purpose of this demo, I'm not going to use any filter. I'm just going to show a rule. So the first rule that I'm going to create, we said we're going to mask phone numbers, so let's make a content-based rule, meaning that I'm looking for a specific content. We'll call it mask phone numbers. And I will choose a classifier or a phone number. Uh, we have some uh, pre-created classifiers that you can see on this screen. In this case, the mark one is, is phone number, and you can see that this classifier specifically is a regular expression that you can see right here. Obviously, classifiers can be more than just regular expression. They could be a, be a group of regular expressions, a group of text, or a script. When do we need a script? For example, in the case of a credit card that you see at the top, uh, not any, not just any 16-digit number is a legal credit card number. We have to check it with a specific algorithm which we coded inside the Guardian masking script, and this is how we do it. But let's go back to the phone number. So we have a pre-made classifier of a phone number. We'll just take a default reduct to replace with asterisk and apply this rule. And now once we save it, if we go back to this initial menu that we saw, we see that now we have a demo policy which we can install. It says, updating all inspection engines. We'll press OK. And then the next time that we reload this page, there are no more office phone numbers, as you can see on this screen. Now, even if we go to some, more, some other screen, since we did not supply any URL filter, you can see that also the phone numbers here on the right-hand side they are also masked. All the phone numbers, or all, basically all the, the text that matches the phone classifier would be masked in this application. Okay, so what else can we do? Let's try something else. We were, doing, uh, we were in this bank and they needed to follow the PCI regulation. And the PCI regulation states that you don't need to see credit card numbers, but you are allowed to see the the last four digits and the first six digits. So this is a partial type of masking. So obviously we have that capability, uh, but I can't show you on a credit card number because we don't have this in, this in this specific application. So let's take email. Let's assume that we have an email. The email has two parts. It has the part of the organization. Let's say that's not sensitive. And we have the part about the user, and let's say that is sensitive. And see how we can apply a, a rule that would mask only the prefix of an email. So let's go back to our policy, demo policy. 
and let's add another action. Okay? Again, this will be a, a, mon, a, a content based action. Then we will call it mask email prefix. We will choose the email classifier, but if I apply it now, it will mask the whole email. Let's go back to the classifiers and, and look at it again. This is the whole email regular expression, but I only want to mask the first part, the part is, that is on the left of the at sign. So, how do we do that? So I'm going to click on one of those features that we have called partial mask, and then I'm going to put in the first part of that email. Now once I apply it and save, I can reinstall that same policy. I've updated that rule. And then the next time that I refresh this page, there are no more emails. Again, I can go to any other screen and see that still the email prefix is being masked. I can go, for example, to support accounts. Phone here is masked, email prefixes are masked. Okay, this is because I didn't supply any specific filter. Okay, what else can we do? So we saw content-based rules where we mask everything of a specific content. We saw content-based rules where we mask partial content. But how about the following? Let's say that I want to mask the title here. Now, I can't think of a regular expression that would cover this title field, and even if I take all these and, and string them together, it would mean basically that if I, if I have sales appear somewhere else, it would mask that as well, and I don't want that. I just want to mask the values within that specific column. So that would not fit within a, what, what we call a content-based rule. What I want to do is create a context-based rule to mask specifically this column within this table, within this page. So let's see how we do that. So as, so far, when we, did, when we chose the rule, we chose the content-based rules. We can now choose the context-based rule and insert a new Guardian masking script to catch that specific column. However, that is complicated, so we simplified this issue by creating a tool where we can navigate the application and choose what we want to mask. So this, we call this tool a selection tool because it lets you select what you want to mask. So in this case, the selection type is table column. We press on the start selection. We go and we choose the column that we want to click on. We click on the title. It gets marked. Okay? We'll call it mask title. Now we know the specific context where it is on the screen, so we can give it uh, uh, styling. We can say, let's give it a color. Let's say, let's put it in this type of color. Now once we apply this rule, we go back, we see that we have a new action called mask title. If we go into that action, we see that we have the script generated for us to mask that specific column. If we save this rule and we reinstall, the next time we go to that page, marketing contact, we see that it's being masked with the specific styling that we requested. Okay. Now, because I've specified specifically uh, uh, the URL in this case, okay, I will show you this. In this item, I've captured specifically the parent of marketing and module contact. So if I go to a different one, I would expect that this column would not be masked. Even if I go to support contact, this column would not be masked because I chose a specific URL. Only in that specific URL that I've chosen will that column be masked. But how about the following? Uh, we were in this uh, 
we had this customer that had uh, in a table had a comments field. Now, in general, the comments field is is uh, a comments uh, a column, and in general, comments are basically the worst nightmare of any software engineer because you know it's free text that is being inserted, and you can put anything there. It could be sensitive, it could be non-sensitive, it could be important, it could be unimportant. But you still have to follow regulation. So, for example, imagine that you have this co this comment. You have the customer is available between 8 and 11 a.m. His mobile phone number is and the mobile phone number. Now, obviously, the mobile phone number of that customer may be private. You cannot disclose it. You may have a column in the middle saying shipping phone number, where that is the phone number that the customer agreed to be contacted in case of a shipment. So how would you go about masking that information? So far, we have a content-based rules, but if we mask all phones, we will also mask the phone of the shipment. We have context-based rules where we can mask the whole column, but then we will also mask the information that this customer is available between 8 and 11 a.m., so the shipment might arrive at 2. We only want to mask the phone number within that comment field. So what we really want is to mask the specific content within a context. So let's see how we do that. We'll go back to the rules and uh, let's look at the phone number again. And I'm going to click on another of those context, of those flags that I didn't talk about, the add context flag. The add context flag lets you, again, navigate the application and go to the specific page and choose a specific column where the comment field is created, and then you will only match the content within that context. Now, I don't have a comments field here, so I'm not going to show it, so I'm going to continue. Uh, and I'm going to go over what else we have here. So we can see that we have masking method, which is something that I haven't spoke about yet. Within the masking uh, methods, what we previously used was reduct, when we replaced it with asterisk. We can also use the remove. And we have encryption. We can do, use different uh, encryption algorithms or tokenization where we can use different tokenizations, either serial tokenization or format preserving. I will change the phone number to be format preserving tokenization and show you and explain the difference in the meanwhile. Okay? So, first of all, let's see what happened. In the application now, it looks as if the phone number is back but it's not really back. What we have here is a format preserving tokenization. The 753 is not a known state. This is not a real phone number. You can call it, probably no one will answer, or at least not the right person. And, and what this allows us, basically, is two things. And let's go to uh, the welcome page and we'll, we'll talk as we look at the picture. Imagine now, that we have a form. In the context of a form, you have several uh, items of information that may be sensitive and people are not allowed to see them, yet you still want to make changes and submit the form. Now imagine that if those mass items of information would arrive at the application server and saved into the database, you would corrupt the database. So we don't want that. So what encryption and tokenization allow us to do is apply a reversible function so that when the request is going through the wire, it is automatically unmasked. We call that a request reconstruct mechanism so that when it arrives at the application server, he, the application server sees clear text. So what you really have here is that only the user sees masked data. The application server never sees masked data. This is why we call it on the glass. Okay? The user sends the data. It is being unmasked. The application server works normally, saves to the database normally. But when the user wants to see the result of that form, it goes back through the proxy being masked, and the user still sees the masked data, well, the one that he's not allowed to see. All the changes that he's made, he can see. Okay? But why do we need to have that format preserving? Why, you know, what are we trying to cheat the customer to not know that we're being, that his data is being masked? 
No, that is not the reason, although that, that would be interesting. The reason is it's sometimes, uh, especially in forms, the form does app, uh, form validation. It looks at specific items of information and checks that you have the right type of information there so that when you submit, you don't corrupt the database. So in this case, if this were a form, it would check that you have a phone number there, otherwise it won't let you submit. And so we need to uh, not only encrypt or tokenize the data, but also have it in the same format as the original data so that it would not break the application.